Why is it so many so many of us struggle with remembering to give thanks? To, to, to give thanks. Why is it sometimes that we remember and sometimes we don't? Why is it sometimes uh, giving thanks seems to slip our minds? Uh, how come we have to have a national holiday to remind us to stop and give thanks? So. Perhaps the reason is because we're just too busy. We forget to hit the pause button and express our thankfulness. Um, we're too often thinking about the next thing. What's the next thing I've got to do? <coughs> I've got to get up. I've got to have breakfast. got to go to work. Um, I've got, got these chores to do. I've got, it's always the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. Um, at work, we ask ourselves, what do, what do I have to do next? What, what's next? Um, how many emails do I send out? How many emails do I need to respond to? Um, what do I need to get? What do I need to get more of? What do I need to get less of? What do I need to get rid of? Um, what do I need to get better at? Um, or in our home life, we're constantly going from one thing to another. Um, what errands do I need to run? Who can, I, who can I call to run an errand for me? Um, I've, I've never called. I just, uh, I eat less. <laughs> so, which is good. I, I've, uh, I've, I'm now way in the two. Remember that is? I mean, that's just like, you know, keep eating and 335, 340, 350, pretty soon. And that was scary. And so, but anyway, so from 335 to uh, two, about 258 now. So praise the Lord for that. <laughs> I am so, so thankful for that. And so, uh, You know, I'll be struggle. I'll be honest. With you, I struggle with this. I, I've forgotten to give thanks to people who have given me gifts or have done things for me or helped me. Um, and I like to say, well, it just, it just slipped my mind. But um, I've repeatedly forgotten to give thanks to people who have helped me with a favor. Have you done that? Just, just kind of forgotten or let it, it slip, slip your mind. Um, I'm willing to guess that you have too. This is part of being human. Um, but can you imagine? Can you imagine this? Forgetting to give thanks to Jesus. Forgetting to give thanks to Jesus. And so, uh, well, there is, there is a true story, a true account. And the reason I say that is that in youth group, um, there's, there's two models we have in youth group. And one of them is that there is such a thing as absolute truth. Do you believe that? There is such a thing as absolute truth. And the higher the kids go in school, the, the more that doctrine is going to be challenged. Uh, teachers and professors, there is no such thing as absolute truth. Um, it's, all, it's all relative. Well, no. John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's absolute truth. The Bible is absolute truth. So when I said this, uh, a true story, a true account um, in the Bible, where a bunch of people forgot to give thanks to Jesus, it's a true story. It really happened. Um, just like your life has historical moments in it. Um, your whole life is historical. Uh, and so is mine. And so what I'd like us to do is look briefly at that account. And so um, Luke 17, 11 through 19. Jesus heals 10 men with leprosy. Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, 10 men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, 
Jesus, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. As they went, they were healed. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. So, verse 11 again is now on his way to Jerusalem. Jesus traveled on the border between Samaria and Galilee. Um, Luke is recording that Jesus and his followers are, are on their way where? To Jerusalem. Um, guess what? For the last time. This is the last time Jesus will go to Jerusalem and celebrate the Passover. This is the last, the very last time. So, in order to get there, in order to get to Jerusalem, they had to pass through the region between Samaria and Galilee. And so all, all along the way, uh, there were small towns and villages um, that traveling caravans could stop at, rest, uh, get supplies, get something to eat, uh, get water, and then continue on with their journey. So we don't know exactly what town Jesus stopped at, but we know there are some people waiting for him um, when he arrived. So verse 12 says, As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance. Uh, they were social out outcasts and for, for them, they were as good as dead. Because they, they had this dreaded disease, leprosy. And everywhere they, everywhere they went, they had to say, you know, unclean, unclean, unclean. And so they stood at a distance and called, called out uh, to Jesus. So by law, by law back then, they were forced to leave their family, their friends, their job, and live only with others who had leprosy uh, or who had other skin diseases. So they were forced to leave their families and they were all quarantined together. And they were not allowed to have contact with any other people. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine? I mean, just like a, a little patch is on, on your, your hand, on your palm or your arm, and they saw that. Um, you, you were quickly ostracized. You were quickly forbidden to be in any social contact with any other person. Uh, you had to go and be with the other lepers. Um, it, was a, it was a death sentence. And so um, they, were, they were all quarantined together and you would not be allowed to be around any of your family, any of your friends, any of your, any relationship you had was cut off. And you were isolated from the world. So, so these 10 men stood at a distance um, and they called out, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And so this was their chance. This was their chance. Um, word had spread somehow that Jesus was coming through, uh, passing through, and uh, they were not going to let Jesus' coming slip away from them. Um, he had healed so many people, the blind, um, the deaf. Um, he had fed 4,000, 5,000 people. Um, they were thinking, could he have the power? Could Jesus have the power to cure this terrible skin disease that they have? So they waited and they waited. They waited anxiously in anticipation at the entrance of the village for Jesus to show up. Minutes seemed like hours. Hours seemed like days. And they waited and they waited for the one chance 
of Jesus coming by and maybe, maybe this miracle worker, they didn't really understand who Jesus was, but they knew he was a miracle worker. Maybe this man could heal us. And so they were probably thinking, is he ever going to come? Um, is that him in the distance? Is that him in the distance? No, nope. false alarm, false alarm. What if he decided to go to another town? What if he's not coming? All these ideas are going through their heads. What if we wasted our time? What if it's another village? What, you know, we, what, we've wasted so much time. This is our chance. This was the moment they had been waiting for. They called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. Their cry did acknowledge that Jesus as their master. And he asked them, asked him to have pity on them. Guess what? These shouts got Jesus' attention. Verse 14, when he saw them, Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priest. You know, for us, as we read this, it doesn't make much sense. Do you, do you have any idea um, why Jesus said that? Why Jesus said, go, go, show yourself to the priest. Anybody got an idea on that? So, wonder if the body cares. I'm sorry? Show that there is a God who cares. Yeah, that's one idea. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, there is a God who cares. Who cares? Um, but for, for Luke's readers. I'm pretty sure, so. I'm sure they were calling the Lord to go back to the Exactly. Exactly. Oh. Exactly. Yeah. The priest had to declare them clean and then they could go back to their job, their family. It was a, a priest, priest's responsibility. And so um, for those reading this, for those reading that for the first time, this would have been crystal clear. There would have been no doubt. Um, was, uh, see, even though there were doctors back then, uh, it was the priest who were given the responsibility to determine whether someone was fit to rejoin society, even when it came to skin diseases. So people would go to the priest, and if the priest checked them out and gave them a clean bill of health, they could go back and rejoin their family and friends, just as Betty said. Um, Jesus said, go, show yourselves to the priest, then something unbelievable happened. As they were going, <laughs> they were cleansed, verse 14. Can can you put, put yourself in there, put yourself in their position? They had, they, we don't know how long they had had leprosy, but probably for, for some time. And they had just been cleansed. They, they looked down at their hands. They looked down at their feet and their arms. And they realized, I have been cleansed. I have been healed from this. As they went on the way, they, it wasn't that they had just been healed. They were cleansed. Now all they had to do was go show themselves to the priest. And then they would be able to return to their spouses, to their children, to their friends and loved ones after years of being in isolation. They must have been thrilled. But then something even more <clears throat> incredible happened. According to Luke, um, when he heard this story being retold, he probably said to himself, I've got to make sure people know what happened next. So what happened next? The leper's thankfulness. One of them, when he saw that he was healed, verses 15 and 16, one of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, Praising God in a loud voice, he threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Um, anybody want to uh, guess why that is so important, that he was a Samaritan? Well, the Jews hated the Samaritans. You want to think back to the 50s, 60s, 70s, and the uh, social discord between whites and blacks, especially in the South. You know how, how bitter that was? 
or this is even worse, whether the Samaritans were considered half-breeds. In 722 BC, uh, Syria came in and conquered Israel, and they deported most of the people, uh, but they left the poorest of people, I believe from the tribes of Ephraim and Manasseh. And so guess what they did? They intermarried. That, that, was, that was taboo. They intermarried, and so they became half-breeds. Not fully Jew, uh, and so the Jews hated them. Um, they would not even walk through their country. If Samaria, Samaritan was up there, they would go take the border up and around, or go down and around, and go up and over, adding a day or two to their travels. They hated the Samaritans so much that they wouldn't even walk through their country. They would walk on the outskirts of their country, which is a, another where Jesus was blowing up a well, Samaritan. And so he stopped, turned around, and ran back to Jesus. This time, instead of yelling, unclean, unclean, he goes through the crowd, and with a loud voice, he praises God. Then when he sees Jesus again, he doesn't stand at a distance. He runs up, falls at his feet, and gives him thanks. And this is where Luke adds that many people don't understand, even today when they read this. And he was a Samaritan. You know, they say, well, no big deal. What's a, what's a big deal about that? Um, it's a huge deal. <laughs> it's huge. Um, Samaritans were people that the Jews looked down upon. Um, then Jesus asked three questions. Were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give thanks to God except this foreigner? Why did only one person return? Why was it that this man paused, turned around, and ran back to Jesus and gave thanks. Weren't they all grateful? Of course they were all grateful. Wouldn't you be grateful if you were just healed from leprosy? Of course they were grateful. All 10 of these people had just experienced a life-changing miracle, and their lives were about to change forever. When, when did your life change forever? When was your life changed forever? The day you accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. Your life changed forever. A new mind, a new heart, a new creation. Did you praise God for that? Praise God when he took all your sins away, every single one of them, and they were all nailed to the cross. They were all put on Jesus' body. What a great day when we were saved, when Jesus, when the Holy Spirit opened your heart so that you could understand and accept him as your personal Savior. And I believe it was last Sunday when Ronnie was baptized by Sean. And um, see a real, real difference in, in Ronnie. Um, so, um, being grateful is an emotion. Gra being grateful is a feeling. Being thankful is an action. And we need to, to more actions. So, being thankful is doing something about it. Instead of looking forward to things uh, he, you're going to do, he paused, turned back, and expressed his gratefulness by falling at Jesus' feet. Um, if there's one thing I think Jesus is trying to get uh, out of these questions he asked, if there's one thing that Luke is trying to teach us recorded in this story, um, if there's one thing I want us all to remember, it is this, okay? 
of this sermon, if there's one thing I want all of us to remember, it is this. In your busy schedule, in your crowded itinerary, your constantly on-the-go life, stop and pause and turn your gratefulness into thanksgiving. Turn your thoughts of, I'm grateful for this, or I'm grateful for that person, into an expression of action, into doing something. It is one thing to be grateful about something, it is another to be thankful and expressing and taking that to an action. It takes doing something about it. Um, just as this man was healed, he paused and turned his gratefulness into thankfulness. Then Jesus said something to him um, that would make him thankful, not just for the rest of his life, but for all of his life. Jesus said to him, rise and go, your faith has made you well. And so literally it says, your faith has saved you. Um, Jesus said, um, I didn't come here to cleanse you from physical disease. I came that you might be saved. For one man, his life changed the day he paused and turned his gratefulness into thankfulness. Um, for some of you, your life can change the day you pause and turn your gratefulness for what Jesus has done into thankfulness for what he has done. So let's get practical. Let's get really practical for a minute. Being a better thanksgiver. Um, many of you have already, you've already made that decision to follow Christ and to give him thanks. But don't let your thankfulness just stop with Jesus. Because there are people in your life whom the Lord has used uh, that you need to be thankful for. Isn't that, isn't that true? There are people in your life whom the Lord has used that you need to give thanks to. Um, giving thanks to our families, giving thanks to our friends, giving thanks to our spouses, to our children, our places of work, um, and in our relationship with God. It's not always easy, so I would like to get super specific. So number one, there's four, four things I want to talk about. Really short, really short, not really long, so um, don't think about four things, that's another half hour. Nope, I'm doing five minutes or less. All right, number one, in your thankfulness, be specific. When you are turning your gratefulness into thankfulness, you need to be specific when you give thanks. I've learned more than this from, from my family. Um, I'm so grateful for my mom and my dad, and it's one thing that they taught us is to say thank you. Thank you to when people do something nice for you. So be specific. Thank you for doing this. Thank you for that. Thank you. And so, then number two, be honest. People can tell if you're insincere, uh, ungrateful, um, dishonest. If you, if you aren't thankful, don't fake it. Don't say thanks because you feel like you're supposed to. Only say thankful, only say thanks when you are truly thankful. The Samaritan didn't turn uh, and go back to Jesus and give thanks because he was supposed to do it. No, he did it because he wanted to. His life had just changed. Someone had done something miraculous for him. He was being genuine. And so, number three, make it public. It was, it's one thing to tell someone thank you, but if you ever have the right opportunity, be thankful to someone in public. And number four, finally, Make it permanent. Put it in writing. You know, we're, we're, we're so used to uh, now texting or emailing. Take the time to write a card in your own handwriting and turn your gratefulness into thankfulness by being specific, being honest, 
making it public, and taking the time to make it permanent. I hope this is just the beginning of a life where you can pause and turn your gratefulness into thankfulness or thanksgiving. Can, can you just think for a minute, can you imagine if this kind of generosity were a simple common practice, everybody, everybody did it, all, all churches did it, all, all Christians did it, that they went out of their way to turn their gratefulness into thankfulness. And so as we head towards Thanksgiving this Thursday, a uh, national holiday, um, think about who you can say you can be thankful to or thankful for. Um, whether it's a, a car or you call them on the phone, um, just, just make, make, it, make sure it's genuine that you really thank them for what they have done. Um, I love coming to church on Sunday morning. It's a time um, in our busy weekly schedule where we can slow down and come together. Or through prayer, through song, through Bible study, through the priest's word, um, we can turn our gratefulness into thankfulness. And so every week now, every week, including today, please pause and turn your gratefulness into thankfulness. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the holiday that's coming up this Thursday, Thanksgiving. Where we can pause, or we can fellowship together, or we can break bread, or we can come together in, in love and community and just be with one another, Heavenly Father. It's so important. Fellowship is so important. And so I pray that our Thanksgiving dinner is well attended. Uh, Heavenly Father, um, thank you for this opportunity to get together and express our thankfulness uh, for each other and more importantly for our Savior Jesus Christ who died on the cross for our sins and who is seated at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us day and night. Oh Heavenly Father, help us, help me to be more thankful in all that you've done for me. And I just praise you and thank you in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Our final song is 